how'd that feel? What, what, what happened? <laughs> Did it make it? Oh, I made it. Did you do a wheelie? <laughs> 1986 Subaru Brat. Can it go seven miles up an unimproved road to get to an alpine lake? Let's find out. Welcome back. 1986 Subaru Brat, you've seen it on the channel before. We got some kayaks. We're gonna go up this Alpine Lake real quick. Well, it's probably, anyways, we're gonna give it a shot. 13 inch tires, uh, low range transmission. The last seven miles, the last five miles, kind of rough, we'll see what happens. So as I was saying a few minutes ago, um, this road is seven miles long. The first five miles is pretty well maintained. The last two miles is where we're really gonna, I brought some uh, road mats or whatever, those traction mats in the back. There's some ditches and stuff. I, I don't know if I can make it. I, I've done it before on the green Jeep. There was a previous video that we had gone up here, but I've never had a kayak in the Alpine Lake. I took a canoe a bunch of years earlier, but uh, we're gonna give it a shot today. It's a beautiful day. It's after Labor Day. Hopefully the place isn't crowded. It's pretty popular. Here, film the road. All those potholes, so the secret, if you're gonna do any driving on mountain roads, the inside curve is where you're gonna find most of the potholes. You can make a smoother ride if you try to stick to the outside, but this, this road's one lane, so we just gotta be careful. And I'm not in a rush today, so we'll work our way through it. Uh, 
uh, drive these roads, you gotta really pick where you put your tires. Uh, these do have skid plates on them, these brats, but come on, it's Japanese metal. It's not like it's a real skid plate. So you always wanna put your wheel on the obstacle to get the body lifted up. We're still just running two wheel drive. I'll probably do that most of the way until the very steep part where I'll have to use a low range because I don't want to burn the clutch out. Okay, so I stopped to show you this. This is what's called a cord road. This section has a bunch of lumber underneath the gravel. And I, I don't know that you'll be able to see it, but as the gravel gets blown out of the way for the potholes, there's some more wood. You'll see the wood, it's laid sideways. Here's some more. And this whole thing was a marsh through this section of the road. So you can see right there we go, some more wood. And it's laid down like that and then they came over it with gravel. It's a very interesting piece of road. There's some more. Anyways, this is like a, it's like a hundred some year old road that we're on. Oh, the beehives. <laughs> when you come up here, you want to close your window. Sometimes the bees come in, but they get all this mountain clover and such. Like I say, this is kind of a, I don't know. This is about 55 miles from our house to come up here. So it's kind of a day adventure. Now traditionally, I'll just, I'll just let you guys look out in the forest. Traditionally, these videos don't do well for me because people, I guess, don't want to take the time to watch. But, you know, it is what it is. In the winter, this is full of water. Here's some more of that wood. Anyways, we'll show you more as we get more. There's a forest section, then we're gonna get into some really spectacular views, and then pretty soon we're gonna be up, really up high. We're getting to the spot now where the first hiking trail is. So we, the video, you guys obviously didn't see the whole road, but we've probably got about four and a half miles into, five miles into it. From here on up, we're going through all these cars, but from here on up is where the real trail starts, because we're going up and over that mountain right there. But if you can see down at the end of the valley, I stopped here so you guys can watch us go over this hump. There's a creek on the other side and they put these big barriers to keep the water flow going down. And I just now shifted into low range and that's the only reason is so I can just crawl over it because on the other side, sometimes there's big, there's big rocks and sticks and stuff. So let's ease on up over here and see what we see. I didn't expect that.
Well, give me a minute, we'll let you know. Okay, I discovered what's happening. Or I should say what's not happening. That little fan is not turning. Therefore, it's getting hot. Let me set you up. Okay, you guys are set up. Nope. Come on, tripod. Anyways, I'm digging around behind the seat and I found this wire. Now, this isn't even staged. And I don't even know if this is going to work. And I think I'm going to have to go take it someplace where I can actually work on it. Because I'm going to have to pull the battery. But down here is the wire plug. Yeah. Let me, uh, I'm in a bad spot on the road. But if I can connect the battery to this fan and that works, Bob's your uncle, away I go. So I got some stuff here. Let, I don't like the way I'm positioned. So let me take us up the hill just a little bit. So now we'll get every guy in the neighborhood thinking he's got to help. Perfect. No help. Um, you see right here, I don't know if you can see on the camera, down there is the plug to the fan. So I have to remove the battery because that's so friggin' hot I can't reach in there. Yeah, way down there. I'll show you in a minute. Anyways, i got to take the battery out. Which is good because I needed to take the battery out anyways because I got those red and green things from the store the other day to put on the battery for this acid so see a car will always let you know when it needs work a car will always get out of here B. a car will always say hey I got problems I didn't know the fan didn't work usually I drive this in the winter now we're taking a spare tire off Called a battery hold down. Most YouTubers don't put them on. That's what makes me exceptional. <laughs> I, when we film these stuff, people always say, Oh, you must have made that up. No, no, this stuff is junk. You drive junk, it's going to happen. So here's my plug. And you see it's right short to the wire harness. So let's, let's uh, push that plug, pull that. Oh, this is dang hot too. There it goes. Now, one side's gonna be ground, one side's gonna be positive for the fan. So, it'd be neat if I had some spade clips, which I'm sure I don't. Let me get my wire. Man, this is getting better. I found this and this. I mean, what What else do you need to fix that old car? So at this point, I'm not overly concerned. If it doesn't work out, I just go down the hill and I'm on with life. It's not broken. It's just not fixed. So we're going to have to do some jury rigging. jury rigging I don't even know if the fan works come to think of it I've never seen it turn and typically I drive this car in the winter and it doesn't need to turn and to where I drive it to work and back it's probably eight miles each way Might have to cut that off. 
Let's test and see if it works. Really. Let's do a little Mickey Mouse work here first. Let's put this on the battery. I don't think it'll make a good connection, but this is just we're just we're just proof of concept at this point. Because I only have two hands. I'll have to get Mrs. Just Enough Garage to use her other hands here in a minute, but let's see if I can do it. If I was alone, could I do it? Alone in the Wilderness. That's a good series. Go watch it. About a guy who lives in Alaska for a bunch of years. Okay. Now let's see. We'll put this one in here because it's got that cute end on it. Does the fan work? Yes or no? Oh, we're on our way. I just got to jury rig this up. Oh, look at the heat come off of that. I bet it won't give us trouble now. Will it work the other way? Do I have it wired correctly? That's even more. Does that sound like that's more? Right. It's a DC engine, so let's... All right, this is just enough garage. You are going to be the wind gauger. Hold this piece of tape back there. And I can attach it maybe. And let's see which one is the best output for wind. First I had it like this. That's pretty good. Let me reverse the wires. better okay Bob's your uncle so let's see what we got here this one negative negative is yellow okay negative is yellow we're gonna just gonna put this together and then I'll just open the hood to disconnect it because that's what we're gonna be at now So cute story that didn't make the last time I come up here in one of my old junky cars with my green Jeep. Mary will attach a video up here if you want to see it. We came up here in that 70 year old Jeep and we did really good till the transmission. I mean the transfer case fell apart and I coasted a bunch of this to a flat spot where we couldn't go anymore. Everybody drove by, nobody gave a hang about me until I finally said, I'm ready for a ride. <laughs> and I got a ride. So people are going to help, but they need to know what you're doing. So what I'm doing is cutting this stupid wire because it don't work. And I will most likely add a switch inside the interior cabin. Because when your gauge goes way over to hot and pukes its guts, that's not good for the car. So, so anybody who says, Darian, that was an original Subaru wiring harness. What did you do? I'll say, well, I did what I needed to do, you know cut off the hand to save the body sort of thing so I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a Ooh, don't do that Shoot. I guess that's where I'm cutting the wire today so then I could always butt connect with the original back on and what did I say yellow was ground yeah that's what I said Come on. Now that's a good, that's an original. You're going to want to keep that right there. Mm -hmm. Now you can see why I got off the road better. Nobody's gonna stop anyways. But they don't know what to fix cars. They're like, well, he's driving an old car and he has a pocket knife. He must know what he's doing. 
I mean, he's cutting into the factory wiring harness. You wouldn't do that unless you knew what you were doing, would you? Would you? Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I don't have any wire nuts or connectors, I'm going to show you a hokey way of success. Now, this is just enough garage and myself have been in these positions before, and nobody gets too excited about it, because I know I drive old junk. And I've only had to hitchhike one time down in California, and the truck wasn't even that old, but the part was apparently. So when you got, you don't have any wire harnesses or nothing, do yourself a favor and make yourself some long tails like that. Now, because I've got this fabulous painter's tape, this is the ground. It's not as critical. It's not going to make any sparks. It's a negatively grounded car, so it's negatively grounded is negatively grounded, whether this wire is touching or not. But what we don't want to do is lose connection. And loose connections will generate heat and they will melt the wires if you have a bad connection. So that one's done. This one I'm saving because when I get up here to the positive side of the battery, I'm hoping I can just shove it in there or something like that. So then when I get to where I'm going, I can just pull it out. But the negative one, it's, it's becoming part of this group. I'm going to put it under there. You know what they say? Uh, nothing's as... There's nothing as permanent as temporary. So because I only need that much wire, I probably only just do that much wire. Then I'll have enough wire if I need to do something later. Like, I don't know, go home with headlights or something. I bet, you know, when I'm done, I'm going to find a piece of... I'm going to find some wire cutters. I didn't really check the car for tools. I just had this pocket knife and I was like, well, that'll work. I am glad I had this wire in here. I don't know why I have this wire in here. It was under the seat though. All right. So now, I think that's a 7 16th. And that's a 7 16th. This, cool, this toolkit is Johnny's little toolkit. And every time we go somewhere, we take it with us. Just for these sort of a experiences he's like gee I wonder what he's doing I don't know I got air conditioning screw him all right <laughs> I watched this one I watched this one YouTube guy and uh Anyways, he's in, I think, South Dakota, North Dakota, and he bought a car down in uh, Texas, and he drove it home, and he says, I, I hate doing this. He says, I can't do it. He says, I, I like having my stuff at my shop. He says, every time I go somewhere, I can't, you know, anyways, there was a big bunch of hooey for him to get, get the car home, and, you know, it makes for good YouTube, but it's not good for, you know, productivity or nothing. I wanted to be on the lake already, but uh, that one's coming out. Okay, slow down, slow down, do it right. Can you believe I've been here long enough the mosquitoes are attacking me? So the other day I bought these because I haven't driven the car all summer, you know, but anyways, I wanted to go on this trip. And I saw that corrosion, which I wiped off of the rag. And I put these in the car and I said, someday I'm going to need these and I'll have them with me in the car. Today is that someday because, like I told you, the car will let you know when it needs stuff. So this is a negative one. I've had to redo the wire because, uh, well, it didn't like the way I did it the first time. It kept slipping out. This diameter wire was smaller than those, so it would. So let's tighten this one. Okay. So now, we put that down there. Should stay out of the fan. Oh, I wish I'd run it underneath there. Oh well, it just goes over here now. This is where it lives on top of the air cleaner. And I'll probably put a... Oh, I don't have a zip tie. You know, let's see if it works still. Oh yeah. Oh, it's not even hot anymore. We've been here long enough. We really haven't been here this long. 20-ish minutes. 
I don't know, half, most half of it's been filmed. But there's a, some fooling around I didn't film because I want to save some time at the other end. So now is where I have to, I think I could just shove it in there. And then, because we have to tie the stuff down. So let's, uh, let's get together, excuse me, get our items together and we'll get out of here. Let me duct tape this thing on. Duct tape which is just master's tape. It's color coordinated. So is this a thing, is this a thing just in, in Washington on this mountain that people don't roll down their window and say, you got it? Do people do that anymore? I mean, put in the comments, if you were a guy that's driven by somebody and then say, oh, I wish I'd stopped. Yeah, you should. <laughs> This is just enough garage says, you never do that. <laughs> I do sometimes. Anyways, it's just something to consider when you're out and about. Not everybody's a rapist and a killer. Most of the time, they're just somebody doing something. All right, I'm gonna clean this up. I will show you us connecting it, throwing the hood back down. And you know what, you've seen it before. Let's show you the rest of the road. We'll get back with you in a minute. Well, the heat gauge is down where it belongs. But it doesn't have enough coolant in it. We put in uh, a great big green water bottle and another water bottle. So it, it was about three water bottles worth, but I couldn't see it yet. It, it's in there, but it's not. So I know that there's a creek up here somewhere, which is where I'm going to. And I'm going to get some mountain fresh spring water and pour in it. Um, so far, it's doing okay. We also have the option of running the heater, which we do not want to do. It's so freaking hot in here already. We're not even to the worst part of the road yet. We're just, you'll see there's even people walking, right? Because a lot of people won't bring their cars up here. This is this is passable. It's when we get further up, we're going to have trouble. I ain't carrying a kayak all the way up the mountain. Come on, look at me. I ain't doing that. So this is just enough garage. Uh, and I just had a conversation with some people walking. We didn't film them. You know, come on, we try to be respectful of others. And that guy stops me. He says, whoa, 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 have you been up here before? I'm like, yeah. He says, okay, you know about that really bad section? I said, yeah. And he says, J and just enough garage miss, it says, well, he's just trying to be helpful. I'm like, oh, he's trying to stop me from being successful, but that's not the case at all. Like I said, just, I was just saying, people walk up here because they don't want to ruin their cars, which is why I have those road mats in the back. If I have to cross them, they'll make me a bridge. Here's a classic example. You see that rock right there? Totally passable. Just put the wheel on it. You still hear the fan running? actually in pretty good shape there's been some years where you could the road would just be closed there's no way to get through it but this is in pretty good shape I actually came up here back in July on a dirt bike which let me tell you is no challenge at all just ride up the road we're doing it Harry we're really doing it that guy's doing it in air conditioning. <laughs> I will tell you a story since we have a few minutes. Whether this makes a cut or not, we were up here riding motorcycles and there was this woman that was riding a brand new motorcycle in uh, a Himalayan motorcycle. And her and her boyfriend, husband, I'm not sure, he had a brand new one too. And they were gonna go up here and camp, but it's very popular for camping up by these lakes. And then she had gone uh, another ways up from here. She had gone up and then the bike had fallen over. Anyways, when they lifted her off the ground, her poor old foot was just, it broke the, between the knee and the ankle. It looked like it broke that bone. Ugh. Anyway, so they were trying to rescue her and a guy was trying to help and it was a mess. So uh, ride within your limits, know what you're doing. Take the trail within your limits, beat, you know. Even though we're only six or seven miles from the highway, you're out in the middle of nowhere still. Walk. 
rocking. Now we'll just show you some rubber. It's actually getting into the pretty part now. part of the trail look down there remember all the cars that we passed that's how far up we are so far we're only about halfway up to the top look at that four-wheel drive Nissan just stopped right there God, I'll hold the camera. You're slipping on the back wheel. It's just a rev and go. On, it's just on that back wheel. You're on loose rocks. It's just a It's this back wheel on loose rocks. Are you in four wheel? So you just kick that rock out. Okay. That's what these are for. It caught it and just, it just flew that thing once it hit the air. It flew it right behind you. Well, I'm probably going to need to come down here. And come across there, I agree. Yeah, it's too steep. I agree. It's a little car. I don't want to hurt it none. <laughs> Did you? No, you brought build, bridge building components. About that wide? Well, we're about to find out. Yeah, I don't want to wreck the tires. I'll let you know.
how that feel. What, what, what happened? <laughs> Did it make it? Oh, it made it. Did the wheel <laughs> hit that rock? Oh, I hit that rock. Yeah, you well, popped you up. You need to be a spotter. Left, right, stupid. I can't see. You were on the ramp. So there's no way to spot that. You kicked the ramp out. <laughs> Come on, let's go to the next disaster. So, you know, everybody's always talking about on a, on a, you can't see how steep something is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't see. No. Let's go. Cars are coming. <laughs> let's get out of here before they ask us for help. <laughs> So here's the most challenging spot. Film the road, let's see what happens. And they're like, we're gonna watch. Oh, the whole corner's jammed up. <laughs> yeah, what a bunch of goons. This is gonna make it hard. That's why I always like coming in the morning because the goons are going up with you not. Goons, goon, bill. Oh, today it was cake. Yeah, the last one was definitely worse today. The last one's not usually that bad. Out there and you can see the parking lot. We're also fighting the sun there. Well, we got uh, three more switchbacks, I think, that are going to be just as aggressive as the one we just finished. And then we're at the top. You know, this is a good car if you can keep water in the radiator. <laughs> and you can keep the, the wheels on the ground. <laughs> yeah, we still gotta go up over the top of this big, big deal here. Oh, big deal. Yeah. You know, sometimes you hear on the uh, internet, how did people drive these old cars? Well, they just drove them just like this. You know, this is only a 38 year old car, but you can bet in 1986, this road was here and somebody said, hey, let's take the new Subaru up to the, up to the lakes, you know? This is a little one. Okay, today we got lucky, that was a little one. Truthfully, I think that corner where we had to use the ramps, I think is where that lady in that motorcycle had an issue, I think. But it might be the next one. They all kind of look the same after a while. Yeah, you can't even get up here until almost the beginning of August, because there's just too much snow. Now here comes somebody else down the mountain.
gas on that one. Bad. So, can we drive a 38 year old vehicle to the top of the mountain? Yes. It was it easy? No. We made it. There were some things you probably aren't going to see on the film. But you know what? We're going to get our kayaks down. We're going to go take a ride. Thanks for watching. We'll probably show you a few scenes here on the lake. Otherwise, that's it. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. It was definitely worth the trouble to get here. <laughs>